No, Joe Theismann or Joe Theismann, however you pronounce it, played a big factor in the resurgence of the Canadian Football League in the early 1970s because he didn't want to go to the NFL without getting what he wanted. Now, at Notre Dame, uh, Theismann or Theismann became the starting quarterback in his sophomore year after Terry Hanratty, later with Pittsburgh, was injured late in the season. Now, uh, in the three remaining games in 1970, he led uh, the Irish to two wins and a tie. In 69, he led the Irish to a number five ranking, (coughs) but he lost to the University of Texas in a 1970 Cotton Bowl Classic 21-17. The next year, the Irish had a 10-1 record, a number two ranking, and one against Texas in a 71 Cotton Bowl Classic 24-11. Now, that year, he was named an All-American and an academic All-American, and it was a contention for the Heisman Trophy. Thiesman, whose last name was actually pronounced Thiesman, recounted in 2007 there was Notre Dame publicity man Robert Valdeseri, who insisted that he change the pronunciation of his name to rhyme with Heisman, but he finished second to Jim Plunkett of Stanford. Now, uh, Theisman, uh, or Thiesman, set the school records for passing yards of the season, 24-29, and touchdowns in the year, 16. He also set a school record for passing yards in a game, 526, and completions in a game, 33, while playing against USC in a torrential downpour in 1970, which he lost 38-28. As a starter, he had a 23-2 record while throwing for 4,411 yards and 31 touchdowns. His 4,411 passing yards ranked fifth on Notre Dame's career passing list. He was inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame in 2003. He was the eighth Notre Dame quarterback enshrined to the Hall, joining uh, former Heisman Trophy winners Angelo Bertelli, John Lujak, and Paul Hornick. Now, he was only drafted in the fourth round, nine night overall, in a 71 NFL draft by the Dolphins, and in the third night round of the 1971 Major League Baseball draft by the Minnesota Twins. After prolonged negotiations with the Dolphins failed, he elected to sign with Toronto Argers of the CFL for 50000 per season, which was really good money at the time. In his rookie campaign, he quarterbacked the Argonauts to a 10-4 and record, led the league's Eastern Conference in passing, and won a berth in a Grey Cup game in Vancouver, British Columbia, versus the Calgary Stampeders. Now, this 59 Grey Cup is well known for a fumble late in the fourth quarter by Argo running back Leon McQuay, close to the goal line, which eventually cost the Argos what it would have been their first Grey Cup victory since 1952. And, of course, he wouldn't win a Grey Cup uh, until some 12 years later in the early 80s. Now, in 1971, he completed 148 of 278 passes for 2,440 yards and 17 TDs, but get this, 21 interceptions. The big field of Canada ate him up. The 72 season was shortened by injury, but he hit 77 for 127 for 1,157 yards and 10 TDs, and was a darling of the Toronto media. During his last CFL season, 1973, 157 of 274 completions for 2,496 yards and both 13 TDs and interceptions. He was an all-star in both 71 and 73. Now, why he went to the NFL is because Miami's rights were acquired by uh, his rights with Miami were acquired uh, for the Redskins in uh, in exchange for the team's first round draft pick in seventy six and the Dolphins selected linebacker Larry Gordon. Tiesman left his CFL and joined the Redskins, where he served as the two teams' punt returner during his first season. Now Tiesman uh, in seventy eight eventually became the Redskins' starting quarterback, succeeding the veteran Billy Kilmer. Now. Should Joe, uh, Joe uh, Tiesman or Tiesman have stayed in the CFL? Evidently, they would have won a Grey Cup eventually, but uh, the strength of Montreal in the East Division was a big problem, and he still was coming along as a quarterback. And his great success in the NFL, he learned different systems playing in the in the CFL. Obviously, a good, strong running back, a good receiving core, which he had in Washington, possibly one of the best teams in the 1980s, was his John Reagan team that bet the Dolphins. But ironically, his career in Canada is kind of forgotten were not for Canadians. And Leo Kale said best, when he was there, that was the best chance for Toronto to win the Grey Cup literally in four decades. That's saying a lot. So that's the story about the CFL ride of Joe Theismann. If you like what we're doing here, we're an Adventure CFL podcast. Give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share.